This is the MFG Monkey Podcast. We sit down with leaders and innovators in the industry to talk about manufacturing, business, and the stories behind their successes. I'm your host, Dust McMillan, owner and founder of McMillan Co. Kurt, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, no, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we we met off of a Facebook ad. Yes. As funny as that sounds, right? <laughs> Saying it out loud. But uh, we randomly met. We had some used pallets to sell, and yeah. you guys came and, and purchased them. And then I kind of looked you up, and I'm like, this guy's got it going on. Let's uh, <laughs> maybe <laughs> let's chat on the MFG monkey about what you're, what you're doing. So, uh Kurt comes from us. Kurt uh, Prosser, am I yep, pronouncing Kurt that Prosser, right? Yep. Is a formal engineer and Ohio State MBA, so it's much smarter guy than I am. And uh, he turned into an analytical marketer. I mean, that yeah. kind of sums it up, right? Yeah. So tell us about your your two companies. You're kind of a serial entrepreneur, from what I've read. Yeah, a little bit there. Yeah, <laughs> no, but you know, really, the the transition from engineering to analytical marketer is a good sort of starting mm-hmm. point, just because. You know, I started in engineering and just found that there was a lot of, you know, small to mid-sized companies that um, needed that help with that, you know, marketing and data and numbers. And, and there's a lot of fluff marketers out there, a lot of just generalist marketers and, you know, some engineers and developers, but there's not a lot of people in the middle. So that's where I sort of found my career path through the MBA program and have been sort of focused on marketing ever since. And and the biggest area where that analytical marketing applies is, is e-commerce. So uh, you know, e-commerce, lots of numbers, lots of data, sure. just lots of, lots of things going on in e-commerce. So, um, just found my way that way and started an agency, Easton Digital, which specializes in, uh, helping small to mid-sized Shopify store owners, uh, grow with Google shopping. So awesome. that's the agency side. And then in doing that though, I do just, I've always been a fan of like eat your own dog food, like just, you know, taking your own advice. And so we started our own e-commerce brands. And first doing in lighting and LED lighting and then have gone into uh, outdoor security lighting and then have gone into glassware. And so um, so right now that's where our, you know, where most of my time is, is spent. So about, okay. about 50-50, I'd say. Um, but right now with the holidays and everything going COVID related, uh, our sure. own e-commerce brands have grown quite a bit. So we're doing a lot of that work right now. That's, that's awesome. One of the things I noticed is you, civil engineering. Yeah. yeah. Which is, it's crazy because that's kind of where I started in school with civil engineering. I worked for a civil engineering firm for five years. So I really found that interesting. I'm yeah. like, you don't see too many people in our, you know, in our space that right. started out with civil engineering. So I'm like, cool, another one. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, awesome. I loved engineering. It's yeah. it a good, good field. But yeah, I just sort of cut the entrepreneur bug and wanted to you know yeah. do something new. And so through the MBA program, I was able to find, find this little niche in marketing. So. so is that how you got started in what you're doing is through your MBA program at the Ohio state? Yeah. 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 It was actually really funny. I was just, I was at the, at the you know, varsity club one night talking to this guy and he was like, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with my MBA program. And I was thinking maybe start a business or do this. Yeah. He's like, well, if you're going to start a business, like you might as well do it in the MBA program, like no better sandbox to do it. I'm like, okay, yeah. well, let's do it. And so I just started figuring out what I was going to do and just started, you know, tinkering around and yeah. found this little pathway. So, well, tell us a little bit more about, uh, Easton digital. Yeah. So Easton digital started in 2013 and, um, and prior to that, I did some work at another uh, marketing agency doing e-commerce, uh, marketing work for larger companies. Uh, but like I said, at that time, I really, just noticed that there was just a lot of small to mid-sized companies that needed mm-hmm. the the analytical marketing approach, and yeah. so I just decided to go on my own and give it give it a shot. And like I said, I was in the program, so I had a little bit of uh, uh, comfort there, yeah. and um, and uh, just started taking some clients and realized that the Google uh, an- the Google Analytics, the Google Shopping, that market is really um, uh, a great market for someone that knows, you know, the data and pivot tables and Excel, mm-hmm. but then also knows marketing concepts. And so that uh, just kept, you know, doing great job for clients and kept getting referrals from new clients and just grew organically for a couple of years. And then 
about uh, about four years ago or so, just decided to grow it a little bit further and started hiring team. And now we're up to nine team members, and wow. um, we have about 180 clients. And so we're we're just been, you know, and those clients are all over the country, and in fact, some, a couple uh, over in Europe as well. But again, all the, everything what we do is really Google shopping and Bing shopping, and uh, for those you know small to mid-sized e-commerce brands. Okay, so. and, and on top of that, you guys have your own product right or products yeah yeah so that was that was actually started in uh 2015 i actually had a uh client that came approached me and wanted me to like partner up with him and so we started doing this led lighting stuff and and pretty quickly realized that there was a lot of opportunity to create my own private label brand for mm-hmm. amazon and started doing that and created mod vera lighting and then um uh one of my current business partner, um, he, um, him and I started working together and we're like, Oh, let's just partner up and do this together. And so that's yeah. what we did. And, and then have been growing ever since. So, uh, we have, um, you know, a small warehouse with 4,500 square feet warehouse mm-hmm. up in Worthington and just, you know, ship out light bulbs. And, a, but a lot of our work is, is, um, importing products from China, sending it direct, directly to Amazon's warehouse and then getting returns to our own warehouse or getting, mm-hmm. you know, excess inventory back to warehouse and then shipping that back out. So right. it's not a whole lot of sort of intense shipping work that we do there. It's right. more of like a staging type warehouse because sure. like I said, everything goes straight from China to Amazon's warehouse. Right. So. And I think when you were in here, did they change that model a little bit where you have to receive it and repackage it and then send it to them now? So that was one of the big hits with COVID. So a lot of us Amazon sellers have been hit hard with that where before like we would ship entire containers just straight to Amazon. Like there was just, you know, everything was going straight to Amazon. And then uh, with COVID, they made some new rules Mm -hmm. and where you have to have certain metrics and, and for new products that only went like 200 units. Well, you know, no manufacturer in China is going to just give you 200 units. So a lot of our products now, especially new products that we launch, we have to actually order some to our warehouse. We'll send 200 units to Amazon and almost do like just in time inventory for some of those new Mm -hmm. products until Amazon sees we have enough, uh, you know, high sales and quality Mm -hmm. metrics to then start taking larger quantities. Yeah. Very cool. It, the the whole Amazon world is very interesting to me. We're on the other end with one of our uh, customers is that we're helping them with the conveyor belt systems and all that fun mm-hmm. stuff. So on a in a different definitely a different stage than what you guys are are doing with Amazon. And then I had a company years ago that I tried to sell on Amazon and it just got, it was so damn much for me that I just, honestly, I got overwhelmed and I just pulled the plug on it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon definitely can be overwhelming I and mean, yeah. there's a lot of pros and cons to it, but um, I mean, it still is one the number one marketplace for, you know, brands for e-commerce stores. And so, yeah. you know, if you can, if you can crack the code with Amazon, if you can get a product in there that does well, yeah. um, it can perform really, really well and, yeah. and grow really fast and it's very scalable. I mean, you know, we've had, we had basically just two guys running our e-commerce brand for mm-hmm. years and we grew it from like nothing to very, very large because yeah. Amazon was able to scale with us, with their warehousing, with their shipping, with everything sure. they do. And we didn't have to worry about it. So well, it was nice. Well, and, and that's kind of what we want to talk about. I, mm-hmm. and I, I love that you sent me like a slide deck to keep us on, <laughs> on track and, and the, you're the first person to do that. And I'm like, damn, that's, that's great because I have such ADD that we could end up talking about like steers before this is over. So it's, it was, it's just a way for me to organize my <laughs> yeah. thoughts. It's, no, uh, I, but I love it. It's, it's really more helpful for me. And yeah. so the, the two biggest platforms that you were talking about, Amazon and then Google, Google shopping, right. is that right. a close second or is that well, yeah, that's a good question. So Google Shop, I mean, Google itself is, you know, the largest search platform. I mean, mm-hmm. that's where, you know, people are going to search for things. But when you start looking at e-commerce and looking where people go to products, um, mm-hmm. increasingly people are going to Amazon. And now, so now for retail and for e-commerce brands, Amazon is really the primary, uh, the, the largest marketplace, quote unquote. But Google's, a, um, a, you know, number two. Uh, and then you have like Bing and Microsoft, mm-hmm. you know, you have those way down below. But but Google actually, uh, the way that we like to think about it is Google, it does a good job of um, going after maybe less product terms, like maybe looking someone looking for more problem or solutions or trying mm-hmm. to find answers or trying to find reviews where, you know, Amazon becomes just 
pretty much people looking for the particular product. So right. there's pros and cons to each. I mean, it's both are good good platforms to go after. So does Google do any fulfilling, or is that 100 percent on on the seller? That's a good question. Yeah. So um, so Google does not do any fulfillment. So the, okay. the 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 with the way that Google, the, but that's actually one of the benefits of Google Shopping because Google Shopping that marketplace, people go to Google, they do a search for a product, and then they see your ad at the top and then they can click on that and come to your website. So oh, okay. you own the customer. You can remarket right. them. You can add, you know, run other ads to them. You could you own their email address. You can sell them other products. I mean, you are, you know, you own the customer. So um, once they check on your website, you have to do all the work though. You right. Know? So, but with Amazon, Amazon owns a customer. So oh, that's, yeah. you know, that's their customer. You don't get to talk to them. You don't get to email them. You don't <laughs> right. do anything. So yeah, there's some pros and cons of both. Yeah. It, so what are the, I guess, the top pros and cons between the two? Yeah. So I think from, uh, from, you know, in terms of, you know, there's like the fulfillment side and operation side. I mean, they, they both have sort of pros and cons, but I think the bigger thing and probably where your audience would be most interested in is in terms of product development, like, you know, how you're going to be thinking about developing products and working with customers. And so when you're thinking about product development, you know, Amazon's a little bit easier to develop products for because you see all the competitor sales, you know, what's mm-hmm. selling well on Amazon, you know, what the cost structure is. Um, uh, you know, so, you know, you have a lot of information on what's working well on Amazon, what's not working well on the flip side, you know, like I said, Google, you don't get any of that. You don't get any insights to, um, product development or what's mm-hmm. selling well, what's not selling well, or what maybe strategies one of your competitions are using to, you know, get more traffic, more sales. So mm-hmm. you don't get any insights into that. Um, where is you, Amazon, you have a lot of benefit um, in, for product development reasons. Sure. So yeah. with, with Amazon, you know, part of your development strategy, are you like searching for products that you like and you're like, and then you kind of back into it or are you looking at it as an analytical where you don't care if it's a, you know, a pink seahorse, <laughs> if they're selling them and you can, you know, yeah. there's enough margin in there, you're, you're selling it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a good question. So I would say uh, three to f- maybe five years ago, mm-hmm. Amazon was really a wild west. You could just, you could just simply look at the numbers and find, say, look, this is selling well. If it was a garlic press or some mm-hmm. sort of random widget, then you can sell it and, and do pretty well. Now, however, Amazon's, I would say, gotten more competitive and there's a lot more um, larger companies looking at Amazon to see, look, what can they do from a product development standpoint? What can they do to sort of take market share or Mm -hmm. take um, share from smaller companies? And so, you know, now you do sort of have to think a little bit more about what's your long-term plan in terms of, you know, how can you market this off Amazon or how could you diversify to other channels Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, so yeah. So now we try to think about more, what do we like to do? What What is a, a good market for us? I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of great opportunities on Amazon, but you know, from our own product development, we don't um, we don't pursue those just because it's not a good fit for us. So, so when you're looking at doing product development, how mm-hmm. does that process work with you guys? Yeah, it's good. Uh, so for us, um, really, what we tend to do is we have like an internal like five step framework that we use for product development, particularly for Amazon. And, and again, because Amazon is the easiest to do um, from a product development standpoint, we'll typically start with that. Right. So w- the steps that we do is we do we it's step one is understand. Step two is like search. Step three is value. Step four is validate. Step five is optimize. So Understand, search, create value, validate, and then optimize. So it's a, it sounds a little complex, but it's actually pretty easy. I mean, it's, it really starts with, you know, just fully understanding the customer, fully understanding the market, understanding what they like, what they don't like, um, you know, talking to, you know, customers, uh, just really getting into their mindset because there's a lot of, um, people that would say start with Amazon, but just don't maybe understand the market, understand the customer well. And so Mm -hmm. that's where they make a mistake. And, you know, as a part of understanding the market, it's important to think about how large that market is. Like, you know, there's going to be, you know, some, but like very specific customers you can go after that, you know, maybe a little bit lower volume, but maybe they're gonna be more profitable. And then there's Mm -hmm. also very, very big markets that aren't going to be as maybe as profitable. And so, you know, the, but the point is you really just take the time to understand the market, understand the customer, um, understand the players. And so 
we do a pretty thorough sort of research and to figure out, okay, well, what is this market about? And, right. and so that's, um, you know, in terms of like a lot of the manufacturers, like some of you, like you may know that market already. You may know right. that, um, oh, but at the same time, you may just know the product. You may know the product really well. And so you have to really go then in Amazon and say, okay, what's the customer that is on Amazon or on right. Google and so try to understand those customers. So that's going to be like step one. Yeah. Well, and, and I think what really was so interesting to me about what you mm-hmm. do is we have a client right now. Uh, they're, they're a large manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And we're, we represent them as a manufacturer's rep. And we also do some marketing for them and things like that. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that we kicked around is, well, we have all this capability. And mm-hmm. it's, it, it's a tremendous amount of capability. It's right here in Ohio. It's, you know, in Springfield, right down the street. Mm-hmm. And they're like, if we could produce a product that we could sell on Amazon, then that would be just another leg of revenue for us right. that we're, we don't necessarily have a customer that we have to please one. Mm-hmm. But if we had our own product, what does that look like? Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's a really, <laughs> that's a really good idea. They're like, well, what could we sell? And I'm like, I, I have no idea. I don't even know how to go about that. Yeah. And then when you, you know, came in here, I'm like, I think this guy might be able to have, you know, kind of lead us down that path. And then yeah. I'm like, that's a really good subject for a podcast. So, well, and, and that's a great point though, because there's so many people that are manufacturers and, you know, companies that think sure. like, like, okay, well, I have this capability, I have this product. Well, mm-hmm. how can I develop the you know, the, the, the product for this marketplace for Amazon right. or Google shopping. And so, you know, I think starting with that really understanding who the customer is on mm-hmm. Amazon, you know, it, you know, it may be different than what you're used to in terms of selling like B2B or selling through mm-hmm. distributors or selling through, you know, other like wholesalers or whoever, like right. it's a different customer on Amazon and on Google. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. Understanding that customer. But yeah, but one of the good things though, it, to help you with that understanding is, is you have that data. And so you can then really start to search for opportunities and Mm -hmm. say, okay, well, you know, what products are in demand on, on Amazon? What's selling well on Amazon? What, um, you know, what, uh, what are other, what are maybe some of my competitors selling on Amazon? Mm -hmm. So then you can see all that and there's free tools that are available to see those numbers. So like in Google, it's just Google keyword planner and spy foo. And then on Amazon, it's helium 10. And Helium 10 is just a free tool that will show you exactly how much sales that product is getting per month and how many, um, you know, what are the top sellers for this category. So it shows you all that data right. real time and it can really sort of help you find those opportunities uh, that, you know, you may not have thought of before. Right. So. Interesting. So if, you know, there's probably a couple different avenues to take mm-hmm. to, you know, obviously get to where you want and that's just selling products. So if somebody doesn't know the product that they want to sell, Easton digital would help them find that or. Yeah. yeah. So we don't do that in terms of marketing. So so most of the people that come to us, um, they already have a product. They've already said, Hey, this is, this is the product I'm selling. Okay. Um, now I say that we don't do that because, uh, you know, we do get people come to say like, ah, I'd like to start an e-commerce business. Can you help me find products? Like, ah, that's, that's like, we're not that type of company. Right. But I would say like a part of, is a part of our marketing. Like when a company comes to us and says like, look, I, you know, you want you to market my product on Google or on Amazon. Uh, what we then do is we're able to see that data Mm -hmm. and then figure out, okay, well, what product do you need to develop off of that? So like, for example, we're working with a company right now that sells room dividers and what we're working on is looking at the data available in Google and Amazon saying, okay, well, what do we need to do differently to the product to increase our performance I got on you. Amazon and Google? Okay. So like, what do we need to do to get a better click through rate? What do we need to get a better conversion rate? Like, right. you know, there's all those metrics that, you know, are pretty technical, but making product decisions based on the data is a great sort of feedback loop to help sure. you really sort of understand the market and really find new opportunities. Right. Huh. Yeah. And, and we were talking before this about the project that we did with red Robin. Mm-hmm. Now we have, you know, the, the IP to sell those dividers. So, and we want to, you yeah. know, but that's not quite our marketing expertise. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, one of the things that we've done is split off MFG monkey into its own marketing company mm-hmm. specific for manufacturers, but that's a whole different ball game 
than selling a product on Amazon or, yeah. on, you know, on Google. So, you know, that's, those are, those are very interesting well, but you even know, like, things for us. Even like that product though, you could say, um, you know, what, is there anything like that selling on Amazon? Like, right. right. You know, is there, you go to, you know, Amazon and see like, just, you know, is there anybody buying that on product or currently on Amazon? Mm -hmm. What is the demand for that on Amazon? Right. You sort of see if there's where the opportunities are. Right. But then you can then go to the step three, which is the value. And you can say, okay, well, step three, how do I create more value than what's currently on Amazon mm -hmm. or with, with the current product sure. top sellers on Amazon? So like looking at, you know, the customer reviews and saying, okay, well, what uh, do they complain about? What don't they like? What, um, what issues do they have? Like, right. and then developing your product around that. Sure. Uh, and, and, you know, ultimately it just comes back to giving the customer a reason to buy from you. So like right. one of the things we did with our outdoor lighting is we saw, look, there's a whole bunch of people searching for solar path lights. There's a mm -hmm. ton of, ton of people searching for that. There's a ton of demand, ton of sales. Um, you know, I buy solar lighting. It's a very easy market to understand. Mm -hmm. But we saw in the reviews of a lot of the top sellers was that oh, it just wasn't yeah. bright enough. Yeah. So what did we do? We came out with the absolute brightest <laughs> right. solar light in the market. Literally, it was like <laughs> 500, you know, like the the solar stake lights that you get from like Lowe's or Home Depot. Right. Those are like that super cheap. Those are like one or two lumens. Oh, wow. We're like, let's just blow this thing out with 500 lumens. Now, right. it wasn't a great product. We had a little bit of technical issues here or there. So, sure. um, uh, you know, in terms of like it's a little plasticky and, you know, wasn't as good as it wasn't beefy, sure. but, it, but we had to make it plastic because it was just so expensive. So right. there's always trade-offs, but um, we have a new product coming out. That's a lot, a lot more higher quality. It's more okay. of the 200 lumen range, but still, you know, one or two lumens sure. versus 200 it's still pretty bright yeah and uh so the, the, you know but that's where we you know you have to sort of look at those products critically mm -hmm. and say okay well where can i offer value right. for that customer on amazon that you know in comparison to those products that are selling well and so sure. if you can offer value uh, sometimes like amazon itself uh less so in google more so on amazon if you're offering a significant value mm -hmm. it can just the, you don't even have to market it. It literally can just take off of itself and sure. it just starts showing really high and sales just go through the roof because you're offering so much more value than everyone else. Now, Google is going to be a little bit different because you have to do a little, little bit more marketing, a little bit more effort. But I mean, I've seen websites where it's a horrible website, horrible product description, but because the customer, because the, the, the company offered so much more value, they were able to overcome that and actually just sell really, really well on Google shopping. Interesting. So is Amazon's algorithm basically based off of reviews and sales? I mean, I would think yeah. that a, a company getting five star reviews on every single cell would, mm -hmm. would rate higher than somebody that's, you know, yeah. has big deep pockets and they have two stars. Yeah, no. It, so Amazon, that is one of the <clears throat> little bit of, you know, knocks against Amazon. Sometimes Amazon's algorithm and how they rank things can be a little bit sort of, gray you know they, mm -hmm. they they can you know rank things because maybe people are giving products away this was more a couple of years ago like mm -hmm. if you gave a bunch of products away amazon would shoot your ranking up really you know? yeah there's a little oh. bit sort of a gray area so you have to be careful about that but but ultimately what amazon cares about is sales they make money when people sell products right so the more you sell the higher what's it's called sales velocity the higher your mm -hmm. sales velocity is on amazon the higher you'll rank so yeah there's wow. a lot of things like reviews and and like, you know, things like that, that are important, but mm -hmm. ultimately it's about sales. And so sure. that's it, the more you sell, the higher you rank. Now on Google, Google shopping, it's, you do, that's going to be different. That's more about how much you bid per mm -hmm. click. So that's pure advertising. So, okay. so that's going to be, um, so if your product is selling well and you have a good conversion rate, it's very profitable, then theory mm -hmm. is you can afford to spend more to advertise it. Um, and Google likes to rank things based on how much you spend because that's how they make their money. <laughs> right. So, uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, um, yeah. So ultimately it comes back to like, you know, if it's a great product, great value, and it's going to sell mm -hmm. well, it can work pretty well in both, both sure. locations, both marketplaces. Interesting. So when you first started getting into this, I mean, not having a mm -hmm. quote unquote manufacturing background, how did that work when you're, <laughs> when you're like, okay, this product is. And I know I'm getting off of no, you no, no, no. About, that's but, great. But I was like, if if you have this product that you want to have manufactured, yeah. we have so many people that come to us and and they have a great idea, 
Yeah. And we'll figure out how to get it manufactured. But the where they really lack, we have a product in, in, in our conference room right now mm-hmm. where it's a great product. We made we made a couple of them, figured mm-hmm. out, you know, how to scale it and make make hundreds of thousands of them, but they have mm-hmm. zero sales. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if we can manufacture <laughs> or not. They have zero idea how to get it to market yeah. and how to sell it. Uh, so they were they were kind of in the reverse, but how did you go about getting products manufactured? Yeah, so fortunately, I mean, with the LED marketing, it's sort of where I mm-hmm. started with LED marketing or with LED uh, market, there was a lot of Chinese manufacturers that were subsidized by the sure. Chinese government. And so they were actually, in fact, reaching out to us and saying, look, we see that you're selling on this website. We see you're right. like, we would like to make this product for you or we have this private label product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have some of that, you know, so they, we were pretty fortunate they reached out to us, but Mm -hmm. uh, now with like some of our new products, it's really just a relationship with the manufacturer. So, uh, yo, my business partner, he's, he's, uh, Chinese and he, um, has a great relationship with some of our manufacturers and is actually Mm -hmm. working with them and saying, Hey, here's what the customer feedback is. And, and, uh, which is great because we get that feedback firsthand from, right. from Amazon, uh, reviews, uh, from customers calling. If something there's, if there's a product issue, they call it, call mm-hmm. in, uh, we're pretty open with our phone numbers and all that stuff. Sure. Um, and so we get that feedback loop and then we're able to sort of send that back to the manufacturer and say, this is, you know, what needs to be done. But right. yeah, it, it, that is, uh, I'd say that is a heart, you know, that even with some of our East and digital clients, that is something they struggle with is like, mm-hmm. well, who do I have make, like, how do I go about, there's right. just not a lot of information or resources right. or to go about figuring out how to make stuff. I mean, right. they, you know, especially yeah. our clients, our clients, are a lot of the, the entrepreneur, the business owner that created that, right. you know, has that idea and they don't necessarily know where to go. So right. that's a, that now you a just problem. tell them to call us. Right? Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it is, you know, we, we probably import less than five or 10% of everything that we have manufactured okay. for people. And it's, and it's been a big shift because of the last administration and now, you know, who knows mm-hmm. what's going to, what's going to happen. So it'll right. be interesting if, you know, the China gates kind of open up again or, you yeah. know, how that, you know, how that works. So, uh, it, it's always interesting to just shift with the market and what we we don't have control over yeah. and, and how things are, you know, come to light. <clears throat> and I think that the States, the uh, United States have, has done such a great job building that infrastructure to support the influx in manufacturing, mm-hmm. which is, it, it's a lot of fun for us because when, you know, you and I were kids, it was go to school, you know, certainly get your bachelor's degree yeah. and, you know, if you get your MBA, you're, it's even better. Mm-hmm. And then now it, it's uh, kids are coming out of school with an MBA that don't have a job and they have no idea what to do and all this debt. Right. So there's being more emphasis on, on manufacturing and skilled labor mm-hmm. where we are starting to build that infrastructure back up where, yeah. you know, when we were kids, the <clears throat> it was just destroyed. We went from a manufacturing mm-hmm country to a service-based country and now we're trying to become more of a manufacturing based country right uh and it'll it will it'll be very very interesting in the next decade or two to yeah. see how much stuff comes back because even though you may want to sell u.s made product you just can't because right we don't have the technology here or a factory willing to take and figure it out so right. but i but actually i think that's that's actually a good um uh, I think using the marketplace like Amazon and Google and selling direct is an mm-hmm. opportunity for a lot of U S manufacturers that you sure. know, now they, by doing that now has the margin mm-hmm. to maybe make it here in the United States or maybe yep. do um, some of the things that they maybe otherwise couldn't, if there's two or three distributors or layers in between that would also sort of raise the prices. I mean, yeah. that's how a lot of, that's how I got started in LED because, you know, we love selling Phillips and Sylvania and, you know, GE light bulbs, mm-hmm. but I mean, there was two people, I mean, GE sold to a company that then we bought from and then they marked it up and then we marked it up and then we sold, right. you know, so it, you know, now, um, you know, some of the manufacturing in the United States, they can sell direct and mm-hmm. have those higher margins that, and make products that maybe they otherwise wouldn't have made. Sure. 
And so that's a, a, you know, a good opportunity for a lot of manufacturers to just, you know, to maybe bring some of that manufacturing back in the United States. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. And it's, mm-hmm. and we're in such a manufacturing hub I and mean, yeah. there's more manufacturers in Ohio than almost any other state. There's more mm-hmm. manufacturers in Shelby County, Ohio, one, one county really? than every other county in, wow. in Ohio. Huh. So yeah. it, that I seventy five corridor, it's a yeah. it's a manufacturing paradise. If yeah. you want to have something made, <laughs> it, and it's it's very focused, and there's so much uh, you know aerospace and things that are developed because of right path that yeah you would it would blow your mind the types of things that are being manufactured right almost right next door. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it's I, I'm from a small town up in northern Ohio. Okay, and uh, it's just yeah, it's amazing how many just manufactured up there and how many jobs it sure. creates and how many you know you'd go by it not even knowing. I mean, yeah, uh, it's it's amazing. So. Yeah, and one of the the things that you know people also like the this widget that we have, mm-hmm. they know who their target market is, right? But mm-hmm. it's really probably digging into even knowing the target market, but understanding the the sub target market of exactly who you're selling yeah. to maybe. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the, that's actually the sort of the four step is, is really, you know, after you sort of understand the market and, and, you know, find those opportunities and, and, you know, create value, then it's really about validating. And what mm-hmm. we, what we always try to do with Amazon and Google is, is sort of like dip our toes in the water, like before we try to go all in on a product. So we really try to just, you know, get some initial traffic, initial advertising sales, uh, or initial sales from advertising. And we want to just confirm that people, Mm -hmm. um, uh, want to buy from us and that they agree essentially with our assumptions or that we validate our assumptions that yes, we're creating value. Yes. There's a market demand here. And, um, so, you know, we always try to do that with these marketplaces because Mm -hmm. you hate to, especially with Amazon, like you hate to send, you know, thousands of units to Amazon that maybe it doesn't sell well, or you hate right. to try to build up your whole inventory and it doesn't sell well. And, sure. and so it's always, you know, recommended to sort of dip your toes in the water a little bit with these products right. on these marketplaces to see how it performs. And then you can always say, yes, now it's working. Right. Now I can order more and do more and, yeah. you know, scale things up a little bit. Well, it's so. a, what's the uh, movie with Will Smith, uh, Pursuit of Happiness? Yes. Yeah. Where you buy, I don't even remember what he bought, but they just didn't sell. So he had all oh, these. Yeah. You remember the the one scene where him and his wife are, you know, they get their picture taken in their yeah, apartment with all those remember. things. I forget what they even were. It was like remember. some scanner or something. Yeah. But none of them sold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's trying to sell it to doctors, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I always think about that with yeah. people buying tens of thousands of yeah. units and then they yeah. just... Or like on the movie War Dogs, where yes. he bought the sheets, the bed sheets, and yes. he tried to sell them to the nursing homes. And <laughs> yeah. the, the nursing homes was like, well, like they, they don't need nice sheets. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, but but no, but marketplaces can be tricky. They can yeah. be a little bit finicky, um, and they can be a little bit, you know, you may look at the numbers, look at data, and say, okay, well, how, you know, this is selling really well, mm-hmm. um, but maybe you don't know necessarily how they're getting that traffic, and so you, it's good to sort of test it out a little bit sure. before to make sure you're validating your assumptions before you start to scale up. And sure. so like we had a product um, that we ordered and I think it was in November, December sold and it did really well. And we're like, okay, right now let's go to order. And like, Oh, well, it's Chinese new year. We're like, Oh, we didn't sort of forecast or plan for that. And so sometimes it can set you back a little bit sure. because it'd be nice to have those sales, but it's a lot, lot safer to do that. Um, we sort of try to take a strategy where like if we launch. 10 products, we try to validate 10 products. We know some are not going to work. I got you. Some are going to be home run and some are just going to be okay. So we want to try to use that validation phase to dip our toes in, get some just good data, good numbers on mm-hmm. sales. And then we can sort of then sort of scale up after that. So if, for your clients, are you also fulfilling? No, them? no. So, so you're, we're, you're we're marketing and then they're handling their own fulfillment. And- yeah, yeah. We're really, I mean, we sort of, and, and the reason why is because we, we sort of found a real sweet spot with the small to mid-sized market with mm-hmm. with Google Shopping, Bing Shopping, and Amazon ads. Like it's just, it's one of those things where it's just it's technical. It's mm-hmm. it requires it's labor intensive. It requires just someone that can really keep an eye on the numbers and knows data and Excel and spreadsheets. And so we try to really focus on that. And so. Uh, you will, we even have other agencies that will hire us to do that for them, Mm -hmm. um, because it's sort of a unique skill. And so we've tried to, I mean, we're a team of, you know, nine people and 
We have uh, for the e-commerce side, we have uh, four people, my, myself's included in those numbers. Mm-hmm. So we have four people running the e-commerce side. So we're pretty small. So we yeah. try not to do too much. Sure. To, you know, try to do too wide, go too wide. <laughs> yeah. So, so for, um, you know, and we kind of already talked about searching for opportunities, but you want to get into that a little bit, a little bit deeper. And cool. you, you talked about helium 10 a little bit. Oh um, yeah. What the hell is helium 10? <laughs> I've never even heard of helium 10. Yeah. So, you know, I think, like I said, if you go through, you know, you know, step one, step two, step three, and you know, four. But you know that step two is a searching for opportunities. I mean, step two, you really want to try to find where the demand is on Google, on Google or Amazon, and mm-hmm. where you know where the sales are, what people are searching for. And so, Helium Ten is uh, a free tool. Like I said, it just it's just it's just Helium and the number one zero that actually reads mm-hmm. the Amazon data. And, okay. and pulls all that Amazon data into their s- system. So you can run queries and filters and say, like, look, I want to find um, top selling products in this field, let's say, and, mm-hmm. and it'll sort of show you that. Or you can say, look, here's two or three of my competitors. How much are they selling per month? How many units are they selling per month? And then I can see, okay, they're selling a thousand units per month. Mm-hmm. Well, if I take some of that market share, that's probably about what I'm going to sell. Interesting. Um, so it's just, it gives you that real clear data to say, okay, well, how much opportunity is there really? Right. Um, and so, you know, and, and then of course, as you, like I said, you know, go into creating value around that, you have mm-hmm. to say, well, if I'm able to create a better price or, or if I'm able to solve all the problems that are mentioned in the reviews, all right, how much of that market I'm going to take away. Right. And then of course you need to validate that to make sure <laughs> that sure. you're actually can, that customers agree with you. I mean, sure. We've launched products where, um, you know, I thought, oh, for sure, customers are going to love this product way better than these other products are selling. Mm-hmm. And this is a much better product. And sure enough, they didn't work at all. Really? I mean, oh, my gosh. It, garage lights was one that comes to mind. We had, uh, uh, you know, the, those garage lights deformable. You just screw into a mm-hmm. regular base and you got those wings that go up. And yeah. We're like, oh, I, I thought for sure I came up with, a. I, I found a, company that had a better design where it was all enclosed it was nice it mm-hmm. looked good it was weren't, they weren't these funky wings that were gonna right. get get uh dust on them or right. spider webs i'm like no it's nice and clean and white and nice size i can just you know hit it with the blower and get up the cobwebs mm-hmm. off no sales i mean really just, yeah it's just people like those wings they like the wings huh. to be able to move it a certain way and uh so we sell those now but we're late to the game on those but um but yeah i thought for sure so so this but that's mm-hmm. the point of you know trying to validate i thought for sure people like the, the yeah. cleaner look and they did it so yeah, i would i would agree with you there yeah but it didn't sell yeah <laughs> i and i know exactly what you're talking about because i think i almost bought them but i don't have yeah. a i don't know a screw, screw in base, thing in yeah my, yeah, in my garage. So. And actually, I have the screw and bases in my garage now, or the the the, defor- the wings now. I have the wings instead of the, oh, <laughs> the really? white one. Yeah, because I of course I have to test it out and just right. remind myself that uh, I was wrong sometimes. <laughs> so. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course. But yeah. the uh, so you get into uh, some formulas and. Well, so really, you know, this is maybe the little engineering side of, of me. I think, you know, the, the, the point is, is like, you know, as you start to validate things and mm-hmm. as you start to see, yes, I'm getting some sales on this right. product. Okay. When you're thinking about, you know, step five and optimizing your, you know, product, optimizing mm-hmm. your data, your advertising, everything, uh, you know, there's a, it's just a really simple formula. It's just, you know, it's, it's return on ad spend equals average order value times conversion rate divided by cost per click. Now, mm-hmm. none of nobody needs to know that. Sure. Okay? But, but the point is, is really what you're trying to do is optimize certain numbers in your advertising on your product to make it work better for you. So like we'll optimize our title to get more traffic or more right. impressions. We'll optimize our our product title and and ad to get better click through rate which in turn makes it cheaper to get mm-hmm. a click right or we'll try to you know optimize our price or our landing page or something to get a better conversion rate and then ultimately like you what you're trying to do is make improvements to your product your product page mm-hmm. your details uh your ad to get 
better numbers in that formula. And so, right. you know, the point is, is it, it's not as complicated as what people make it out. To sure. And so I get a lot of questions from, you know, manufacturers. Um, in fact, this today, the lady um, is, is having an issue with some of her, her advertising, not getting the return. And, and um, she's thinking like, oh, well, should I do this? Should I, should I change my ads this way? Should I segment this way? And, you know, she's really, really struggling and going a hundred different directions. I said, look, I'm like, sorry, like it's, it's easy. Like it's mm-hmm. really about your average order value. You have to, you know, you, you have to increase the amount that people buy. And she sells mm-hmm. these bracelets that for like events and things. And so I'm like, if we can get your average order value to a hundred dollars, Mm-hmm. and your conversion rate is what it is, the cost, per then the math works out. I said, sure. you'll be profitable at that point. Right. So I'm like, don't, we can't sell, we can't promote those small bracelets. You have to promote the big pack, the big quantity. Like, right. That's it. That's the simple thing. And so, sure. um, you know, so, but the point is, is like, you don't want to make, you know, it, it is a lot simpler than what, you know, a lot of people make it. It's, it is right. really just about pulling certain levers or making mm-hmm. certain changes to make the math work sure because a marketplace like amazon is all about math right how many people are visiting your site how many people are converting and what it costs to get them there i mean it's mm-hmm. really that simple yeah so oh awesome i i can't wait to talk to you more about this <laughs> offline just yeah. with uh you know things that i have going through my head and then a couple of other customers that i think that you can absolutely yeah. help out. So, well, yeah, it's just there, there's just a lot of opportunity. I think for yeah. manufacturers to just think about, like, okay, well, what could I do with my capabilities, my machines, what I have, in, you know, and yeah. c- could I just put a product on Amazon? And maybe yeah. it's not a lot of sales, but I mean, my my uncle owned a, a sheet metal g- g- company mm-hmm. up yep. in up in Freeman, Ohio, and okay. you know, he made battery cases for Crown Battery, and yeah. you know, I just thinking nowadays, like, man, if he just used his robotic welders to create some, you know gun cases or just like those stack yeah. on gun cases or yeah. create some shelving. Like he could have done that very, very easily. And yeah. those things sell crazy well on Amazon. Yeah. And so, um, you know, just taking little things like that or, um, you know, you know, lots of just little things that you can look at and say, well, what could I do here? Mm-hmm. You know, and just, if I do the step-by-step process where I just find the opportunities and then validate and create value and, you know, then start to optimize. You can really have a good sort of side product side business that generates some good cash flow because yeah. the margins can be really high since you're the, since you're the manufacturer. <laughs> sure. No, absolutely. And I mean, you don't get any closer to the watering hole than that. If right. you're, if you're actually running the press. Right. So, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's great. Well, tell everyone how they can get a hold of you and I'm sure you're on every social media <laughs> platform out there, but yeah, no, the, the best way to, to, to get a hold of me is just email me at Kurt, K-U-R-T, K-U-R-T, at EastonDigital.com. So E-A-S-T-O-N, digital.com. So, or you can go to our website, just EastonDigital.com. Okay. So um, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions about Amazon or things like that, by all means, yeah. let me know. We're, we're happy to help people or point people in the right direction. So yep. people just you know, need a little bit of information here or there and we're happy to point in the right direction. And yeah. like I said, if you're, if you have a product and you're looking to advertise on Google or Amazon, we'd be happy to have a conversation with you and see if it's a good Perfect. fit. So, well, and, and like always, we'll put all the contact info yeah. in the, uh, in the description and we're, we just launched, uh, on a couple other platforms. So that's, okay. that's fun for us. So yeah. I right, thank you so much for, for coming on. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone, for joining us for this episode of MFG Monkey. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please email them to us at info at mfgmonkey.com.